a very exciting moment. Uh, I have, uh, I think, uh, eight pole visitors today, and they are going to uh, install my uh, solar panel. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna go like this. Head up under the shingle. And then uh, the rail's gonna go on this. Oh, wow. All right, and then we seal everything up. It seals back. So that's why my shingle is still, uh, still in the good shape. <laughs> yes, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And I can lift up some of the shingles, slide the flashing underneath, and then this is the part that holds the rail. We'll put the lag bolt through the opening into the holes we pre-drilled earlier. So now the flashing's in place, we can visually see how it keeps water out of the roof. You know, the water will run down the roof and we're adjustable up and down. So the rail can adjust underneath the panels to keep the panels level. And the reason it's called a snap and lock system is because the rails sit right on top of these little feet and they click into place. Just like, you know, a little Lego. The rail itself is black, which makes it a little more aesthetic on top of the roof, and it can slide forward and backward inside of the channel as we're positioning it. And there's a channel inside of the rail that hides the wires for all the microinverters. So the rails are up and it's microinverter time. So the microinverters, they're held in place with these little metal pieces, which can just dip into the rail and then clip up and get covered by like, let's 
a snarl or a shadow from a tree, the rest of the panels keep on working, which isn't always true of other types of inverters. So all of our solar panels are on the roof, and it has to be a way to get the power from the roof into the house. We do that with something called a roof junction box. We have to drill a small hole in the roof. And normally this would be enough if you have adequate to happen. The bigger hole is still fine, though, because the roof junction box, once we seal it up with that clear sealant, will make sure no water runs inside. The shingles will just fit down over the flashing, and no water will be able to get into the attic space. So the trunk cable is laid down inside of the rail. We've put some electrical tape over the connection, and then we just zip tie the whole thing. So remember, every house is going to be a little bit different, but this is the exterior roof junction box, and we have the yellow wire running through inside the attic space. There's gray stuff down along the side of the house. That's what these guys are here. Hey, that's why the guy is going to see. Yeah. Before you fall, calm down first. There's no extra light in here. Oh, it's actually best to just use a headlamp because if you have a light, it'll heat up the attic even more. Oh, wow. So you're starting now to uh, connect the... Yep, so all the wires have gotten into each of your arrays. So now all they have to do is land, splice their wires to our wires. Oh, yeah. Which go down to This is connected to uh, the panel on the roof, right? Yep. Yeah, so you've got an array here, and then you've got another array down there. That's where the rest of your solar panels are. Yes, sir. And these two are bringing those solar panels over to this array, where we have our main runs coming from your combiner for your in-phase system. Hey, buddy, this is my first time to see this. <laughs> and now you know you have an access here. I know, wow. I didn't know that there's a... Yeah, so you did not find yet the raccoon. I have seen no raccoon, luckily. <laughs> I hope I never see a record. <laughs> chop it where we need it and remove the extra plugs then we can take these two trunk cables inside of this junction box and connect it to the insulated yellow wires down to our exterior junction box on the wall so we're just about to start laying panels and because of how many panels are on this roof i have to have two arrays which means that there's two trunk cables coming into this junction box you might be wondering what we've done down here on this section of roof and it's because we can fit more panels if we run them horizontally so we've laid the rails out in a different way and that just shows that no matter what your roof looks like we can always orient the panels to most utilize the space so this copper wire right here it's called a system ground, and it's tied into each one of these rails with little spikes and clips. So if any electrical anomalies, like faulting or lightning, happens, it'll just transfer the electricity right into the ground, heading down to the junction box. So let's talk about setting the solar panels and wire management for a second. Right now we have three panels in place, and a fourth one right here, ready to snap in. Each solar panel has two wires on the back that plug into the microinverter. The microinverter can hold four panels at a time, that runs down the trunk cable, all the way to the roof junction box down there at the end. The DC wires are at one end of the panels, so we're running the wire end down those center lines, so they can easily plug into the microinverters that we have placed. None of these wires can be touching the roof, so there are little eyelets at the bottom that we can zip tie the wires to. We can also twist them together a little bit to make sure that nothing is touching the shingles before we plug them in. This little guy right here is called the mid-clamp. This is what clips into the rail and holds a panel on either side. There's a myth going around that solar panels aren't very green because of how much energy it takes to them.
not necessarily true. Depending on where the solar panels are manufactured, it takes anywhere from six months to three years for a solar panel to offset the carbon it took to make it in the first place, which isn't very much time considering how long its lifespan is. Another perk of the panels that came in my solar wholesale kit is that they are black on black, no solar frames. It's something to think about when you're picking out panels. I got the black ones so they blend into the roof a bit more. Another perk of having the microinverters is that the system is totally modular. We can add panels or take away panels as much as we want, and we don't have to worry about the junction box or like limiting our system to a certain size when we set it up the first time. Solar panels are installed. We've left our rails a bit long to give ourselves a bit of leeway, and now we can just cut them off. So these end clamps basically slide into the channel, and then when we tighten this bolt right here at the end, it snugs it up tight and holds the panel in place. Then these plastic end caps snap on to keep everything looking aesthetic. From the I'm glad that I'm off today. <laughs> it's an exciting day. Yeah, I know. So, do you think how long it takes to uh, to finish the uh, um, work at the, the, the roof? The rooftop. Like, I could see them probably being done by noon, later than 2, 3 o'clock. Oh, okay, okay. Electrical will be done by 11, 12, 15 as well. Just you, know, you, you never know what you can run into mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. should be like circuits in your house like that might be i'm not sure but it could be like your heat your refrigerator a sub panel lighting circuits are usually 20s yeah, um, yeah. so any outlets usually are like the smaller 15s and 20s but like your bigger stuff like your air conditioning your oven your range you mm -hmm. usually see those on like 30 40 amp breakers but something okay. more overcurrent protection for okay is this uh does this door lead to the garage Oh, no, sir. This is a bathroom. Oh, okay. Perfect. Would be all right with you for me to come in and out. Yeah, hey, just I think uh, you're in the right uh, uh, interest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So just, just yeah, well, jumper, uh, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah. But let's just say you have a partial A, another partial A, and then your home run to the inverter A. Yeah. You would, you know, just take those three and put them under a large crimp cap. Okay, that's that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, buddy. How's everything looking? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. This panel that you are stalling, this panel that you are stalling right now, this is connecting to the...
Roaming around. All right. Well, oh, I saw my last name over there. Yeah. He said it's my last name. Yeah, we had it prepped in our warehouse for you. <laughs> I'm glad that you were not uh, get get lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay. Everything. Wow. Anywhere and then, between two and four. Today. And then tomorrow it means I have my solar power. So what we'll do is we'll have to when we leave today we'll have to leave things off. Okay. Um, we'll check to make sure everything's working okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but we need to leave it off for a county electrical inspection. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yes, sir. But, uh, At least it's installed already. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, so. That's a good one. We'll get you set up on that. We'll have an inspector come out. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. The guy who is working with the Renault panel is one of the handsome guy. <laughs> In your name, sir? 
My name is Mark. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> and there's the other guy. <laughs> He's really working so hard. <laughs> and that's the other one. My name is Ben. Ben, thank you, Ben. Yes, so just just have fun, guys. Thank yes, you for sir. coming. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I hope you will like it. Oh, I hope you That's a okay. Costco, uh, Costco product. I'm Good. working at Costco. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. So thank you guys for coming.